got my my photo album out for you. Uh, uh, oh I, yeah. I actually, I actually uh, went to Vienna. Let me show you. Yeah, please, please do. Can you see that? Yeah. <laughs> Can you see me? Yeah, that's. I'm gonna call my best friend in Paris, who I'm supposed to have lunch with in eight hours. Okay. Okay. Ring, ring. Pick up the phone. Uh, the origin of everything was that Rick had read um, my master's thesis, which I was working on when I met him. Um, I auditioned for the the movie Slacker, and while I was. Uh, in the process of doing Slacker, I was working on my master's thesis. My master's thesis was on Ana Isnin, and he asked me when I was finished with that if he could read it. And he read it, and he, much to my surprise, he asked me if I would write a script with him, which was a real shock because I had never written a script before. And I said, well, what kind of script? And he said, a boy meets girl. I have no idea what your situation is, but I feel like we have some kind of a uh, connection, right? Yeah, me too. Great. We sat down to write without having any idea what we were going to write about. All we knew is it was going to be a boy meets girl story. And um, I knew that he liked kind of a finite uh, structure to movies, you know, like Slacker Happens in One Night, Days of Confused, very similar, very finite structure. And so I said, well, I have taken these fantastic trips by myself. Um, the first one uh, was to England, and I went all over by myself, and I met fantastic people. And then after that, I took a trip to Europe. Again, I took the train and met fantastic people just on the train um, and had all these memorable and, and you know, really fantastic experiences and I said what about that as a, a way to create our structure because you get on the train sometimes you meet an amazing person and you have an amazing conversation and in some cases I actually would get off the train with the person and would walk around whatever town we were in and would have this incredible conversation over the course of many hours, and then we would part ways, and it was all very, you know, romantic. And so Rick said, ah, oh, that's a great idea. And so that, we went from there. And so we had created some structure. We knew that we had a, a male and a female who met on a train and got off the train, and we had ideas for various conversations they could have over the course of the night. So listen, here's the deal. This is what we should do. You should get off the train with me here in Vienna and come check out the town. We just got into Vienna today and we're looking for something fun to do. If you go to IMDb and you find, and you read the trivia, there's this girl called Amy mentioned all, all over the place as the girl that one day met him on Philadelphia and the movie was uh, supposed to be uh, like a way to express his love to her but she died like three months before the production started. So this is all fantasy. I never heard about Amy, so I, I don't know. I, I just know what I experienced in co-writing the movie. And so it was based, to my knowledge, it was based on uh, train trips that I had taken, meeting incredible people. And then these conversations that Rick and I had together I never heard about Amy. I met a guy on the train and I got off with him in Vienna. We're still there. Are you crazy? Probably. Another secret for you is that, you know, it wasn't written for Europe. It was, we thought that it would be made in America. Yeah. And that it would be on Amtrak. And we actually went and looked at locations in San Antonio, Texas. Which, you know, but, but the thing is, is that uh, Rick ended up getting funding from this Austrian company. So that changed everything. And then we had to reimagine and um, imagine that one of the characters would be European. You know, it wasn't, we didn't really want two Americans meeting on the train. So um, Ethan Hawke had already expressed interest in being in the movie, and he was hot off of... Uh, that movie Reality Bites, so he was sort of a hot property at the moment, and um, then we needed to 
uh, have a European play the female. There are a few names that you can find online, like Jennifer Aniston, like uh, I think it was Winnet Paltrow, the other one, that they, they were considered for the female role. Are you aware of this? No, they were considered for the female role because I, I saw the uh, I saw the casting tapes. So I think that a lot of mythology builds up basically over over time about films. I saw the casting tapes. I can tell you um, one of the women who auditioned for the female part was Lily Taylor, who did a beautiful uh, audition, and she was in that show Six Feet Under. Yeah. She. Her audition was so good that I was really rooting for her. There were a number of others who were really good, too. But, um, no, there was no Jennifer Aniston or Gwyneth Paltrow in those casting tapes at all. Since we're never going to see each other again, I don't think we should sleep together. Let's see each other again. I don't want you to break our vow, just so you can get laid. <laughs> I remember writing that ending with Rick in uh, the spring of 1993. We had had a very definite conclusion. There may have been some um, some things that were added at the last moment, but for the most part, it was written. It was it had been written a good year before. We didn't think of it as a trilogy at all, but it was successful. You know, it was it was. I don't believe it was a great financial success. It was a very low budget film. And it was, it didn't, it's not that it made a ton of money, but it really lasted with people. Yeah. People were very touched by it. And so on the basis of that, uh, we, you know, Rick, Rick asked me if I would co-write the next film, the sequel. And I was kind of, I was surprised because we, I hadn't been thinking sequel. So that was an interesting idea. We definitely weren't thinking in terms of sequels, tri trilogies or anything. We were just thinking about getting one movie out, you yeah. know? Yeah. How did you debate this? How did you decide they were going to like separate their ways and a a each one of them is going to live a different life? And maybe because this is when you didn't know that we were going to have a sequel. Maybe in the future they meet again, maybe they don't. That's up to the audience to decide. So how was debating that, that ending? Well, in, in my experiences with my train travels in Europe and in England, I had these amazing conversations with people. I remember especially this Norwegian. Um, I had this incredible conversation with this guy. We walked around Paris together. And at the end of the trip, you know, we talked about many things. And at the end of our day together, he had to get back on his train to go home to, you know, north to Norway. And we did not know each other's last names. We did not know each other's addresses. We had had, you know, a memorable experience, at least in my view. We'd had a memorable experience. He got on the train. We said goodbye. At the So there's something very poignant about that. And I feel like it's a real metaphor for life, you know, because because that's the way life works. Sometimes you connect with people and you separate, and that's it. You, you don't see them again. You can't find them again, you know. Yeah. And especially then before, before the Internet, before all these ways to find people. It was romantic to, pass, to part ways and to pass by that experience and to just have it in your memory. It lives in your memory. Yeah, we, we need that kind of stories because uh, um, we are used to like the stories that have this happy ending where everyone like stay happily ever after and we need to romanticize that, that thing that you can live the moment, you can have a, a good time and then each of each one of the two people involved in this relationship can, can have a happy life without being with each other. Uh, I think that's amazing of, 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 the, of the movie. Uh, the it's other one... The way life works, right? Yeah, that, but, but we are used to maybe uh, the industry setting us the idea that the perfect love exists and the perfect love is the one that lasts forever and the couples that last forever. That's the common thing that you can find in a romantic movie, for instance. And that's... that's right. And then it's really, it's real. you will meet, over the course of your life, you will meet many people that you have connections with. And maybe a few of those will be very, very special to you. And for one reason or another, that person will not be able to be in your life. You won't, you know, mm -hmm. you will say goodbye. And yet you'll remember them over the course of your life as someone who had a real impact on you. And you don't know if they even know 
what they meant to you. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. They, they kind of live on the other side of the world. It could be that, that um, you know, it, there are many things that could keep you apart. Yeah. But it, it is kind of, it is, there's this kind of romantic notion of finding the one. Yeah. I don't know if that's the way life works. You no, know? And, it's, and it's like uh, stressful sometimes to, to have to find that one for you. Uh, it's not that easy and it might never happen and you have to be happy with that.